the SAML protocol, and it will be presented by Clément Udo. Yes, thank you. Do, do we hear me? Yes, okay. So, uh, just a few words. I work for Linagora, a company uh, that do free software, and I also work on uh, some free software. Maybe you know, you know that. Does someone know uh, Lemon LDAP in the room? You should know that. Okay. I know. I know you know because uh, we are going. We, we are going to talk about the SAML protocol, which is a single sign-on protocol. So I will just introduce. Sorry. Yes, do it's not a like the hand on stick. Uh, yes. Okay. It, it Is it better? Yeah. Great. So, a uh, few words about senior, uh, senior sign on. Uh, it's just a simple mechanism that uh, makes you log in one time and then you are authenticated on all uh, applications. So, for dummies, you first access an application, you are redirected to an authentication portal, so you log in here and then you get a cookie uh, and you give this uh, to the web application and uh, it's, it's done. You, you're authenticated on the web application, okay? So we'll see how the SAML protocol uh, will use this uh, kind of things to do a uh, single sign-in. So the protocol, uh, so it means security assertion markup language, okay? So if you don't like XML, uh, go away, okay? Uh, it's, it's just XML for uh, assertion, for authentication, and for security. The security world is very important because, because uh, the, the protocol is built upon uh, XML sec and all security stuff. So you will have some XML messages with a signature uh, in it. So we'll see how we use all the security parts of XML to do authentication with SAML. So uh, it is a standard, okay? It is simple, you just have to read all these documents and then you know how to do SAML, okay? So here, uh, the, the game here is to talk about this in less than 15 minutes, okay? So we will try to sum up all this. So if you look at SAML, you will see that the first time we access to an application, which is called a service provider in SAML, okay? And uh, in the second step, you will get to the identity provider, which is the authentication portal, okay? So the first difference in, is that when you get uh, into the identity provider, you send an authentication request, okay? And then you go back to the service provider and you send an authentication response. So we will see what's in this message. First, the request is very simple, okay? You just have to say, uh, I want to issue a notification request. Uh, here, the issuer is the service provider, okay? I, I, I am a, a simple SML PHP here, and I just want uh, an identifier from the user. I want to authenticate, okay? So it's really simple. You have an XML message. You put it in uh, base uh, 64, okay? And you put it inside a get parameter or you post it into HTTP, okay? So when you want to send this to the identity provider, you, 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 you take that and you, you use get or post to send it to the identity provider. Now we have the answer, okay? So very easy, no, no panic. <laughs> Uh, this is what we get as a, 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 a result. So we try to analyze, I, analyze it. Okay, uh, I have four slides. Okay, to to analyze the, the response. Uh, so you see that the issuer here is the identity provider. Okay, it is the response. Uh, here you have the signature. Okay, so I, I sum up this, and here you have a status. Okay, great. I know here that the authentication was successful, okay? Because I have this in my XML message. But in the response, I will have also 
an assertion. And in this, I will get all the information I need to uh, do the authentication on the service provider, which is a web application. Okay, so we still have issuer and signature inside this markup. And here you have the subject, which is uh, who is the user. Here we use the name ID, which is a term in SAML to say the login, okay, which is the identifier of the logged user. Here we have a, a random login, okay, the, I, the identity provider just use a transient a name ID, a random a login, and we will see that we also send attributes of the users, so the web application will know which user is connected. Okay, next. Uh, we have conditions, so uh, we, the service provider have to read this and to apply this. So he knows that this uh, assertion is not valid uh, until the, the, this date, okay? And he also has uh, an obvious instruction. This means if you get this message on another URL than this audience, you should reject the message, okay? Uh, you have here all the authentication statement, which says when was the authentication done, and uh, the, the validity. And here you also have an indication on how the authentication was done. So when you are a service provider in SAML, you can get some information on how the user logs on the identity provider, even the user do, do, does not log in uh, on your site. So it's very important because as, an, uh, as, an, as a service provider, you can ask an identity provider to do some, for example, uh, SSL uh, authentications. If you request it, the identity provider should do it and then say to you, okay, he, he uses a certificate to authenticate. And the last part, you see, you have a, an attribute statement, which is not mandatory, okay, we, we, we are not, uh, it is not mandatory to send this, but this is very useful because you send all attributes of the user, okay? So you, you can do some provisioning with SAML, so it's the user authenticate, and then in the authentication response, you first say that, okay, it's authenticated, but you can also send some attributes to say, okay, this is the name, this is the mail of the user. Great, so you learned uh, SAML in 10 minutes. I hope you're happy with that, uh, just to, to show you, uh, if you want to do SAML with free software, you have some choices. Okay, um, first, uh, libraries. You can do, uh, you can use Lasso. Yes, question? I think the list is incomplete. Ah. ZXID.org, both as a library as an identity. Okay, uh, I don't know every, every implementation. So, ZXID is another implementation. Uh, you can use, uh, libraries like Lasso or OpenSML and uh, all these softwares uses SAML. So you can just use this software and you don't have to code any SAML message, okay? Uh, I personally uh, work on Lemon LDAP uh, NG, so use it. <laughs> it's in Perl, okay? <laughs> cool, uh, Authentic is in, in Python, uh, this is in PHP and these are in Java, okay? So whatever you want. As a language, you can you can use it. And the ID is in. So ZXID uh, is uh, written in C with language bindings to Java, PHP, Perl. Uh, okay, Perl, great. <laughs> <laughs> and what's more, it actually doesn't require to program at all. So there's a mod out SAML module for Apache HTTPD. Okay, you. you it in and okay, it. we have in Apache some uh, authentication module. We have a. Uh, one from uh, ZXID, you, you also have ModMelan, which is another implementation of authentication module for Apache. So a small demonstration. Uh, demonstration with single sign-on is really boring because we, ju we just see that we are authenticating, okay? But I, I, will, I will do the... It, it's not boring when it fails, okay? <laughs> so uh, I, I will try to make it boring. So you, you are here on a... Simple SML PHP uh, configured as a service provider, so it is an application. I want to log on an identity provider. I use Lemon LDAP as an identity provider, so I select it. Okay, I was logged. Great. Well, I will log out. 
Uh, another important thing for uh, SAML is that we have a specification for the login part, but you also have specification for the logout part. You can send some XML messages to log out from any application. It's really important because you can close a session on all service providers, which is not done in a, with a, a, a other a single sign-in application. So, I try to do a real login. Okay. I wanted to, because there was an interesting pop up menu you should have open, but okay, too late. Uh, okay, so here I am on the identity provider, so I just have to log in. You, you say, you see it? I have a request. Okay, so you have the, the SML message here, okay? Why well, it's long, it's long, it's long, it's long. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, okay, it's too long. But it's here. So, And it's done, okay? We don't see it, but we have a SML message as a response, and now we are logged, because this has analyzed the response and get all the information, all the attributes from the SML assertions. Okay, I'm done with the presentation. So just a small word to say uh, thank you for, to first them, okay? Uh, organizer and to the, my company. So, if you want, we can um, uh, wait, uh, ask one or two questions. We have time. Yeah, we have five minutes. Oh, good. Um, two quick questions. Um, one, security is well known for being very easy to get wrong and very difficult to get right. Um, SAML, as you can see, is not exactly the trivialist of specs. No. Have you got no. any advice for how to not do it badly? Um, the second thing is, am I right in, the SAML stuff as I understand it does an awful lot of backwards and forwards and redirects in a lot of implementations. Have you got any advice regarding performance? Um, oh, first, uh, SML is complicated but it's because it's a security protocol, okay? If you do OpenID or CAS, you don't have any security layer around uh, these uh, protocols. So you need to for, for example, uh, before uh, be able to do an authentication between a, a service provider and an identity provider, an identity provider, you have to share your uh, public case, okay, your certificates, because you need each part to be able to uh, check uh, the signatures of the message. So uh, you, you need to do some configuration on both sides be, before being uh, allowed to do authentication. It's not the case for uh, OpenID, for, for example. You, you, you can use any OpenID provider uh, without any big configuration on the client side. Okay, and then with forms, uh, you just have to transport uh, the messages as, a, as big binary uh, messages in a GET or POST uh, request, so there is nothing really hard with that. Maybe I don't uh, realize the complication, but it's, it's not really hard. It's pure HTTP, yes? Yeah, so before I make my own question, I should like to answer the previous question a little bit more thoroughly. So first of all, OpenID and OAuth, in trying to get to the level of security functionality of SAML, have over the years, one by one, added pretty much every feature of SAML except maybe the XML part. Mm. But all the like audience restrictions and uh, more sophisticated assertions and uh, tokens and stuff like that, all of that turns out to be necessary to do a responsible and secure implementation. And the OpenID folks early days tried to take shortcuts. The stuff wasn't secure and still isn't secure. And now they are catching up essentially on the security front. So effectively, SAML committee went through quite a lot of analysis to come, you know, it's difficult to sec get security right, but there was a serious effort, which effort should not really be ignored. So by using SAML, you leverage that effort that was made. Anyway, so my own question was that, is there any, well, it's a little bit late in the game now, but maybe for next year, we open source SAML implementation should somehow get together in context of this meeting. Yes, we of, of course we can may, maybe do a, a track with uh, all the uh, implementation of 
SAML products. It, it can be great, yes. Just as a comment on the security part, uh, the implementation, uh, as the implementation uh, is used uh, by the academic and research community, uh, they found bugs, but the bugs have been fixed in a timely manner, so it just as is. Okay, thank you. Uh, my, my time is coming, so thank you.